Hello everyone, I'm Fan. Today I want to show you the best and easiest water recycling system for toilets. Before I introduce my entire system, we must first understand the piping input and output connection rules. Since input and output ports follow different connection rules, we need to explain them separately. First, let me explain the connection rules for output ports. Let's open the plumbing overlay. Now we can see these four output ports are connected in series on the same pipe. When output ports are connected in series, the port farthest from the input has the highest priority. This means in the current system, the leftmost liquid pump will operate with priority. Now let's connect power to this system. Then we open the plumbing overlay and activate this system. As we can see, after the initial few seconds, only the leftmost liquid pump continues operating while the others have stopped. Just as I explained, the pump farthest from the input port maintains priority. However, liquid input ports follow the opposite rule. The port closest to the output takes priority. This is a system with four input ports connected in series. As I mentioned, when the liquid pumps start working, the leftmost pump will input water first, because the leftmost liquid vent is closest to the pump's output port. Now let's activate the system. We can observe liquid only discharging from the first liquid vent, while the other three remain inactive. Now I'll flood the first room with water. We can observe that when the first liquid vent gets blocked, the liquid starts discharging from the second vent. When the second liquid vent becomes blocked, the liquid will then discharge from the third vent, and so on down the line. As a side note, this piping series rule also applies to gas pipelines. Okay, now that we understand the piping connection rules, we can proceed to build our toilet water recycling system. What we're seeing now is the complete toilet system I've built. Here the toilets and sinks have their input and output ports connected in parallel. Make sure not to mix this up. Polluted water exits the toilets and enters our water sieve. After purification, it flows out through two serially connected output ports. Here we need to construct a pipe bridge, as its input and output ports are also counted as liquid pipe terminals. This configuration ensures clean water first refills the toilet pipes until completely full, with any surplus then diverting to our liquid reservoir. Since duplicants generate additional liquid when using toilets, we need a liquid reservoir to store the excess. Without it, the entire system would quickly back up. The liquid reservoir's output can then connect to your base's clean water pipeline or any other purified water applications you require. It's worth noting that the water sieve produces polluted dirt. To prevent this from emitting polluted oxygen, I've placed a layer of water beneath it. The water amount must remain below 150 kg per square to ensure proper sieve operation. Alright, let's now activate the water supply for the entire system. After supplying some clean water, we can simply disconnect the input clean water pipes. Now we wait for duplicants to use the toilets. We can observe the polluted water being processed through the water sieve, then primarily redirected via the pipe bridge back to the toilet system, with only excess flowing into the liquid reservoir. We built this liquid reservoir primarily to prevent toilet system failure during low water usage periods that may cause pipe blockages, serving as a simple buffer. We can also build a storage bin and an auto sweeper near the water sieve. Load the bin with sand and the sweeper will automatically replenish filtration medium to the sieve. We can build a bottle filler on the other end of the liquid reservoir and connect it with a pipe bridge. This configuration will prioritize bottling before distributing water to the base. Okay, we've now completed a super simple toilet water recycling system. Hope this episode helps you. See you in the next video.